Welcome back to Fireside Chats with Paul. Just kidding. It's the next Q&A. I know, you've been waiting for it. First one was like 30 minutes. Second one I thought we would do shorter and it was 30 minutes. The fourth one I'm gonna go for all time record of doing 10 questions. We're gonna hit like 45 minutes just to piss you guys off. I'm just kidding. I'll try to keep it as, as concise as possible. Uh, but you know, really, well, I getting through the questions and giving you guys as much information as possible. So, selected another ten questions. Um, some of these are going to be ones that we've seen before that we haven't answered in a while. That question, the answers to them have changed a little bit, and some of them are um, are a little bit different or out of the ordinary. So, uh, we'll just kind of get down to it. If you guys are curious about having your own question, you know, featured in one of the videos or just answered in general. Uh, again, down below, the first link down below will be for the form that you can submit to, to submit your question. Um, and I go through these once or twice a week and just kind of pull new new questions out or um, set up the next Q&A, uh, get ready for it. So if you're looking for yours to be answered or you, you submitted yours a while ago, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll try to get around to, if not all of them, then the majority of them, unless it's some question that we answer frequently in other places, we'll try to get to all the questions that we have put on there. Uh, so the forms that down below, and again, we're gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna be dividing up uh, every single question as we go through with the, with the answer, with the, minute and second annotations down below so you can click ahead if you just want to scroll through scroll down to the bottom and see all the different questions that we're going to feature in this one and then click to the specific ones to hear the answers you can do that um, so this video will be indexed that way uh, but without further ado guys we'll jump right into it so question one when will this year's 2018 limited edition set be available um, so good news and bad news on the on the answer for this one the good news is is that uh, because this year is technically our 10th anniversary, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. Um, the set's not going to be the traditional set like we've done in the past. Um, we're working on a multi-piece set that we're going to produce and launch uh, potentially at different, different stages in the year. So there'll be different items available. Um, we're not going to do just one specific pen. We have a plan to do several of our pens in different styles and in different colorways that we, we don't normally release them in, and they'll be available for purchase throughout the year. Um, we're also looking at potentially doing a purchase, a limited amount of those pens as a set themselves, um, like a collector set, very, a very few of them done that way, um, and those will be uh, put together in a fashion that will be even different than the other ones so uh, we're still kind of hashing out we know what we want to do with the with the pens we know we're, we're machining some of the stuff on them now and having we're testing the anodizing on some of the ones that are already done we think it's really cool it's not going to be the traditional set um, where we partner with another company the 10th anniversary is all going to be uh, Keras products at Keras pens so it's just going to be pens that doesn't mean that we're not going to do collaborations throughout the year. We're still going to do some collaborations throughout the year. So they just won't be attached specifically to the anniversary of set this year. So you'll see some changes and more information is going to be forthcoming um, in the next mm, 30 to 60 days uh, when we start to see some stuff get finalized as far as machining and then coming back from anodize. So that's the first question. Second question, which ink is best for filled notes books? So, um, couple ways to answer this question. First is, it depends on what pen you're using. Um, I don't recommend, personally, uh, a lot of the filled notes books for use with fountain pens, specifically because not all filled notes have fountain pen uh, capable paper. Um, so when you purchase filled notes, you need to pay attention to the paper weight and the paper type that the pages are being, are, are that the pages of that book are, are made out of. Um, Phil Notes has a tendency to switch their papers up for different runs of different notebooks, not just in the layout, whether they're lined or, or grid or dot grid or blank, but also in the, the weight and the capabilities of the paper that's inside. Um, so the majority of filled books are all of filled notes books or all of them really are pencil friendly and rollerball ballpoint friendly. Majority of rollerball and ballpoints. There's some outliers, the rollerballs that um, 
that have a tendency to bleed through some of the pages because of the type of ink that's used. Um, but the majority of them are okay for that. But you have to, if you're using fountain pens, you really have to pay attention more to the to the field notes book than you do to the ink. Now that's not to say that you can't find an ink that will write okay on field notes. Um, you can use inks that are uh, like X Feather. Noodler's X Feather is a non-feathering ink that is acceptable and, and usable on most um, inexpensive paper. Um, and then also a finer nib, an extra fine nib, and drier inks in general, um, less saturated inks um, will work better on those. But again, I would say that you purchase and use each notebook specific to the pen. So if you're a fountain pen user, go out of your way to purchase filled notes or use filled notes with your fountain pens that have paper that is really made for those writing instruments. Um, you're just, you'll save yourself the headache of writing on it and then seeing it bleed through the paper or completely feather out. The other thing is, is, you know, like, there are other options out there besides field notes. If you're a fountain pen user, you really like fountain pens, um, Story Supply Company, Paper Stacks, um, Write Notebooks are all high quality pocket notebooks with really quality paper um, that will that that will hold up to any of your uh, fountain pens and inks um, relatively well. So I actually that's why I use those three manufacturers of notebooks for pocket notebooks with my fountain pens and use uh, my rollerballs and ballpoints with other pocket notebooks. Um, so this question is, how is the new coin going? If you're not familiar with, if you're like, what is this coin thing that, I, that you're mentioning? Um, last year in July, we launched the Karis Pen Club um, and membership into that club was via the purchase of a um, custom minted coin that we partnered with Shire Post Mint um, to have minted. It was a distressed copper coin. We did the note. We did the artwork for it. Um, they hand make the dies for their for their stamping, and then they basically minted a bunch of coins for us. We sold them. You got access into the pen club with that, and there was you know, exclusives for the pen club, um, early access to releases, or introductory price points that other, that were not available in other ways, um, and then stuff like that. So the coin itself is entrance into the pen club. As far as this year's coin, the artwork is done. Um, it's been sent off to Shire Post. We are simply waiting for him to, for Woody there to finish the, the dies and then we hope after that we've already selected the material it's going to be a different material we're not doing copper this year we're doing something a little bit different one side of the coin will be the same as last year we're still going to we're going to maintain that um, arizona side with the flag and then the um, established date as kind of our go our standard for the tail side of the coin and then we're going to change the head side um, with artwork on that's going to change this year and you'll see that when we get it back um, it's going to look really cool i've seen some of the some of the um, early mock-ups that he's that woody's done and they look fantastic so can't wait to get it back in they'll be for sale again on the website um, around late june early july same as last year the cl so the, the club's going to basically run from july of this year through july of next year um, so a full 12 months um, when we get that one back in any plans to bring back cubes in color or possibly one in all copper? Um, so the short answer for the colored cubes is no. Um, and, the, and I'll give you some background on that. The, the problem, we ran into problems with anodizing the cubes, largely because the way that they mount into the, to be mounted and then dunked into the tanks to have the current run through them. Their mounting system, we went through several different systems for them to mount, and then when they were taken out, they almost always had problems with the finish, um, just not being consistent or just to the point where we had to have them done several different times just to get the ones out that we ended up shipping. Um, so the loss there 
was relatively great in terms of the, the ones that we were not able to salvage. Um, so financially, it just doesn't make sense for us to do that uh, until we can find somebody that has a process that works better. Um, and it's just, so in the short term, it's not something that we are looking at doing. Uh, we would potentially look at manufacturing a different side, style of pen holder that allows us uh, a multi-piece pen holder that allows us to potentially have a, a smaller piece of material that was um, that was used in the in the, the function in the form of the pen holder that could be anodized and then attached. Um, so that's that's the only way that we would really look at having anodized pen holders in the future. It's not going to happen with the cubes until we until some anodizer steps up that has the capabilities to do it. And so far, we've been able to find anybody that can do it that way. As far as the copper ones are concerned, um, it's just not feasible for us to do the cubes out of copper for a couple different reasons. One is sourcing material in that, that type of copper, the type of copper that we can use on our machines in that size, um, like, like two and a half to three inch, um, square rod is extremely difficult and very costly. Um, it's one of the reasons why the brass cubes are $350 is that sourcing that material and then during the machining process getting that done without having major finish problems um, is a very time consuming process. Um, so it's right now it's nearly impossible for us to do that with the copper itself even if we were able to do it you're looking at a cube that's i mean just roughly speaking is going to be double the brass price so somewhere around 650 to 700 dollars um, just because it would literally we would literally have to contact a maker to have us custom make that material in that size and, and it would be in such small volume that the price per um, per length unit would be just exorbitant for for that material. So it's just not in the realm of possibilities right now for us to do. It would be it would be easier just to take uh, copper a brass one and basically copper plate it um, and far far less money too. So and even then doing that would be time consuming and the loss on that might actually be high. So it's just not something that we're going to offer right now. Um, uh, we get a lot of questions about it, but it's just not in the realm of the possibilities of what we would do currently with that, with that product. Do you have any custom bulk order options for wedding parter, parties or other events? Absolutely. So um, bulk orders, for sure. Um, if you contact us via email and explain the situation, I can give you the price breaks for stuff like um, wedding parties or corporate giving or you know even small companies you want to buy 10 or 15 you know pens for your company that you have like you know a couple of employees or you want to give them away or clients or whatever we can work with you on that stuff um, custom orders like there's not a lot we can do custom for small orders um, there's some things we can work with you, um, and again, contact me if you have questions on that. Send me, a, send us an email. Fill out the contact form on our page um, to, to really get that process started. But we do do so, we do stuff like that frequently. Um, we do have the ability, depending on the volume, to reach out to a local uh, laser and laser engraver to get uh, laser engraving done on some stuff if we meet his minimum. So. So there's that option too. So if you're if you're wondering about wedding parties or corporate pens or you know laser mark pens in bulk or anything like that, um, hitting me up via email um, is the best option to go or co or completing a contact form on our website. Have you considered making a special pen line for first responders, police, fire, etc.? I get this question probably once a week in one way or another, um, and. Um, the, the short and easy answer to this is we've thought about it. The issue with our pens is that our pens don't really, 
the stuff that a lot of they a lot of you, that you see a lot in other first responder type type pens, thin blue line, thin red line pens specifically, um, are somewhat difficult to do for our pens uh, because of the layout of how those color schemes are. It's like a whole bunch of black with like this thin blue line of red or blue in them. We don't really, you can't anodize in those colors. Most of the ones that are done that way are done, they're either painted by hand or or they're, they use a, a small band or stuff like that. Um, we do offer first responder price discounts um, as one of the things that we do. You just have to contact me through your organization uh, or directly and we can work through that stuff. It has been something that we've thought about doing. We've done some with different um, city departments and, and police departments where we've done logos and stuff like that through laser etching, uh, which is the main thing that we've been able to do, um, or specific colorways that we don't necessarily offer. But it's not, it would have to be something that we designed around that entire, from the ground up kind of. Um, so it's it's kind of always been in, in the back of our minds to potentially do something like that or to figure out a way to do that. Um, but the current process of how we make our pens doesn't really allow for it without getting really um, hands-on technical with the, with the application of the coloring, color schemes. Um, but if you have an idea for something that you'd like to see us potentially do that we could implement on our pens um, for something like that, you can always send me an email um, and I'll get back in contact with you. Um, but right now we don't really have the, it's not feasible for us to offer a specific line of pens for those, which is just not in, not in the grand scheme of things of what we're able to do currently. Um, so this says why limited colorways. Um, and so this question, I wish the, whoever posted this question, uh, went a little bit in depth further, what they were looking for, um, uh, are you speaking specifically to our um, limited edition pens? Are you speaking specifically to the EDK? Are you, you know, where are you going with that? So I'll try to answer this one as, as most as I can. Um, for the majority of their pens, we don't really limit the colorways except with the grips uh, because uh, because anodizing is, is it varies batch to batch to batch getting complete color pens where the grips match the barrels match the match the caps just not something that's going to happen unless we only allow purchase of those pens in complete colors um, so that's one thing so the limited colorways in terms of like the decagraph stuff um, we're limiting the decagraph colors simply because of the purchasing habit the, the purchasing the volume that we sell of those pens currently and how we manufacture them on the machine. So it's more along those lines than anything else. Um, if we were able, and the website, like it gets tricky with the way that we, with the way that we inventory stuff and it syncs and the inventory system syncs with our website, it gets kind of tricky to add like all the different random ones and twos pieces. As far as the EDK and some of the limited colorways that we've done with certain pens, um, the EDK was designed and manufactured from the ground up with the idea that it would only ever be available in, as a, um, in the standard version as brass, tumbled brass, tumbled copper, tumbled aluminum, and a tumbled matte or matte black finish. Um, because of the everyday carry, like because of just the entire concept of the pen was built around that. Um, so we have stepped out of those colorways into um, other colorways for limited reasons, just because it allows us to sell some different colors for that pen. And usually we sell through them frequently all the way through where we don't have a lot of stock left over that's taking up space. Uh, allows you guys to get some stuff that we don't sell like all year round. Um, but it just doesn't fit the idea that we had with that pen. I, I think it's kind of difficult for us to explain that when we design a pen, we design the whole vision for the pen from the, for, as we see it. Like the, 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 the retract pen was designed specifically for the two color with a two tone 
idea in mind as a as an homage to the Parker Jotter and to the two-tone color schemes that you saw frequently in mid-century American advertising. That's why we did that two-tone version of that pen. It's why that's it's why we haven't strayed from that path, except in limited um, for limited number, you know, limited edition uh, retracts, and that will continue because that's that is part of the story of that pen. Um, and the EDK is the the colors that we have for the EDK are part of the story of that pen. Um, so that's why and it, that's why we're doing it that way. It allows us to free up inventory space where we have to hold on to all the different colors and sort through them. But it's also that specific pens were designed with that with those color schemes in mind. Um, it was intentional when we sat down to do that. So that's more why we limited the colorways because of the design of the pen and the process that we came up with and the story that we built into those pens. Each drew from places where that's why we offer the standard versions of those colorways. Can there be complete pen sets available for, for, for purchase, for example, a complete set of copper pen designs? Um, we're looking at doing some of this with some of the pens is offering like a brass and copper set of pens like all of the ballpoint like the retractable pens and then all of the capped pens um, in brass and copper specifically. Um, it's something that probably if it happens is going to be later down the year. We're not even in fully in stock right now on all of our heavier metal stuff. We're going to be machining a production run on quite a few of them this year to get back in stock um so there if you're looking for something like that it's something that we've thought about doing it's not something that we've done so far just because it's kind of far down the down the list of taking the time to take all the photos and then program the website and get it all uploaded um we've been focused on other things so that one was further down the list of stuff that we wanted to accomplish. So we're getting to it. It's just taking a little bit more time, but it is something that we thought of and it's something that we would potentially do here in the future, hopefully by the end of this year. Will you be bringing back orange as a standard color throughout your pen styles, please? Uh, so yes, we are in the works of bringing back orange, hopefully full time uh, to the majority of our pen styles. Um, we were working with an out-of-state uh, anodizer in Utah uh, that got us some really quality samples and a large enough batch that showed us that they are consistent with their anodizing. So we have sent stuff to them preliminary for a, for a first batch of production pens. And um, we hope to have them back sometime in the summer. It just depends on how long their fulfillment time it is. Um, so that's that's the short and, and sweet uh, answer to that is yes, we're really working towards that possibility to get orange back in our pens. And that goes for some of the other colors. We're working towards getting green back. We're really working towards getting pink back and potentially getting colors that we haven't had in the past by working with, with anodizers that are not in Arizona, that are in states that are close to us um, and that have a, that we ha have tested and they have are, are giving us decent samples back. Last question, guys, and we can wrap this up. Um, if you had a unicorn, a pet unicorn, what would you name it? Hands down, a line from, I believe, the first X-Men movie, I'm the Juggernaut. So I would name my pet unicorn the Juggernaut. I haven't checked out that, the, the clip to that. It's a great clip. I believe it's uh, Vinnie Jones is the actor that plays that character. Just a great line from the movie. Every time I think about like having some kind of weird pet, it's always... I'm the juggernaut, that line pops into my head. So that's me. Uh, if you want to tell me what your pet unicorn would be named, uh, as long as it's family friendly and you know, you're not going to get blocked from YouTube, post it down below in the comments. Maybe randomly pick one of the winners or the, the best one that really jumps out in the comments below and send you some cool stuff. Uh, maybe some notebooks or some, some stuff that we've got floating around, some uh, discontinued stickers or some cool product will send it to you so if you uh, if you if you make me laugh by your pet unicorn name I'll, I'll send you some cool stuff in the mail um, so hopefully this guy at this quick Q&A answered some of your questions uh, maybe it spurred you to think of some more questions if so get hit up the the form fill out the help fill out the, the the questionnaire that's that's linked down below uh, like I, again as I say with these all the time Really enjoy sitting down doing this 
with you guys, for you guys, um, hopefully answer some of your questions and uh, just give you some insights into what we do and why we do it. And, you know, we're not holding back on anything. We're kind of giving you as much information as you can digest. Uh, so we would really like it if you would subscribe to our channel. Uh, it really means a lot to us for you, for you guys to show your support. And one of the easiest ways you can do that is to subscribe to us. Please like this video. And then also guys, um, please start sharing our videos on your social media account. So we really would like to see our videos showing up in other places by our viewers posting them and sharing them other places. So if stuff jumps out at you and you have some people in your social media circles that you think our videos would, would speak to, could you please, we would really like it if you would share them with other people. Um, we're, our our videos are not monetized, so we're not making money off of them. Um, however, we really feel like you're one of the biggest reasons that we attract customers and attract um, people that interact with us. So you're kind of our street team. Please use these videos as a way to get the Keras na name out there and show other people um, what we have to offer so if you are doing that currently thank you we really appreciate it if you haven't done it be really awesome to see you guys post some of this stuff and share on your social media platforms until next time guys thank you again for watching through this entire and extremely long video and uh next time we'll join again around the fireside and have another nice fire chide, fireside chat session with paul talk to you soon